and the choir literally yells musically, one after the other, zow, 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 and, and uh, the piece unfolds and zow, 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 Heinrich Schütz, as one of the sacred symphonies, wrote this piece about Zaul and um, in the, his inimitable fashion, which really few composers ever got near, he paints the drama. And the story in the Bible is that a, a blinding light from heaven struck him to the ground and Jesus says to him, come up there, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? I was um, for about 30 years working with the University Choir, Choir Roman College in Melbourne, and I left in July 2007 and thought I'd like to go up to Nocturne 10, and so I got together 18 of the best singers of the last 10 years of that choir and started the Australian Chamber Choir. The idea was to perform the great works for the last 500 years. Of course, central to that is the music of Bach, J.S. Bach, that is, there are many Bachs. And Australian contemporary music was, from the outset, very important. I'd already done about 80 first performances with the college choir, but I wanted to put together a choir that could do that rather better. We've been away three times in this four years, mostly Germany, uh, Poland, Denmark, Italy, and uh, we finished up in July this year in Paris. The tours range from between 15 and 20 concerts. It's fairly intensive, all done within a month. And we sing, as I say, works from the old masters, but most importantly, uh, contemporary Australian music. It's pretty difficult for me to do a concert without Bach. This particular one is Come, Jesus, Come, Come, Jesus, Come, and it's, uh, it's someone welcoming death and the words are my my strength is gone and my spirit uh, wanes ever more ever more and then in the in the chorale at the end as always he uh, expresses his faith in the afterlife and and, and uh, so yeah com yes com it's just Bach and uh, there is nothing like Bach <laughs> First violin is uh, Briar Gersey, who leads the players always in the Bach series. Second player is Christine Reuter, who plays with State Orchestra of Victoria, but also plays in this Bach series. The viola player, John Quain. Cellist is uh, Rebecca Dudish. And the violin player, Ruth Wilkinson, the only violin player we have in Melbourne. And the organ is played by Ruth Spoke, probably my best student ever. So it's an uh, all-star cast. <laughs> Tchaikovsky, the title, can't say it in Russian, is Legend, and the subtitle is The Crown of Roses, and it starts off when Jesus was a little child, da 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 da, and he plucked a rose and it turned blood red, and it's really about the crucifixion. Um, it's quite short, maybe two and a half minutes, but very, very beautiful. When Jesus Christ was yet a child, he had a garden, small and wild, wherein he cherished roses fair, and wove them into garlands there. Now I'm putting an argument against my translation here, because it should be sung in Russian. Anyway, at the end they sing, um, Then of the thorns they made a crown, and with rough fingers pressed it down, till on his forehead, fair and young red drops of blood, like roses sprung. It's very, very nice. Our 
lady of Mount Carmel. She sits up on top of the church there, you know, 50 metres up or so. It's in Middle Park, which is a, a beautiful part of, of Melbourne near the beach. Very quiet. Uh, that's the best thing about it. No traffic and no trams. And one of my singers discovered it three or four years ago and said, I think you should look at this. And I walked in and said, oh, thank you. And the parish priest is a musician and, uh, and he's very, very interested to support us and the office is supportive. A lot of people go to classical music uh, because they think they should. If you go to the opera, you'll see that all dolled up and you know, don't want to be seen as much as hear the music. In Melbourne, there are three or four active chamber choirs of this nature and uh, the audiences are not huge. 200, 300, 400 if you're very lucky. But if that's going on all over the country, and certainly Sydney and Brisbane and Adelaide uh, have big chamber music movements, uh, quite a lot of people listen. And this music is elite, it's true, it caters to a, a certain um, number of the, of, of the population, a certain segment of the population. This particular piece is called Epic. It's a piece by Christine McComb, Melbourne composer. It's written on poetry by Luago Diop and by herself. And it's all about childbirth and bringing a child up. Four verses. A child is born, a shell is cracked, a skin is shed, a journey begins, an epic of love. And I get goose pimples when I read it. I've got them now. Listen to things more than beings, hear the voice of fire, hear the voice of water, we jump. The dead are never gone, they are in the shadow that grows lighter, they are in a woman's breast and in the growing ember, they are in the cry of a child. This is from Biraka Jok, and she writes, an epic journey, unwritten destiny, an unknowable truth, a transformative love. Of all the music we're doing, it's all fantastic, but this is the most important piece, because it's us. We have settled on six sopranos, four altos, four tenors, and four basses. And when you split that in half, it's three, two, two, two. And it works very well. Pergolesi um, is known for, for two um, pieces beyond mostly. One is the Starbuck Mata, and the second one is this Magnificat. It starts off with the basses. Ma! And the, the basses are singing this bass line, and it's very, very dramatic, and the strings are going for their life, as is the organist. And um, there are beautiful solos. the Et Misericordia, soprano and alto solo, and uh, it's just a, it's a ripper.